Hey, welcome to episode six of Bloggers Are Weird. I am your host, DJ Paris. That's the most exciting intro I have done, and I feel like a total idiot. Sound like one of those douchey radio guys. But I'm from the blog thoughtsfromparis.com. Totally 100% non-douchey because it's all about me. Anyway, so, so is this podcast. So we're on the sixth episode so far in the history of the show. And the podcast is finally starting to take shape. And here's what we're doing or what we've been doing thus far. What happens is I churn this bad boy out every single week. Now, every other week, I interview a blogger who reads one of their posts live. Then we do an interview and discussion piece for, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. Now, on the other weeks, such as today, the focus is on yours truly, where I read one of my stories. Got it? Sure you do. Why not, right? A quick thank you to everyone who has rated me on iTunes. I really appreciate it. Also, please remember to tell a friend about the show. Now, unless you hate the show, then just shut up and go, go away. But anyway, tell people about the show so I can brag that my show keeps growing. See, I'm trying to impress this woman <laughs> who uh, will only go out with me once I hit 1,000 subscribers. That's a, that's a very specific request. I think she might be nuts. Anyway, so today I'm going to be revealing the most disgusting, vile, disturbing, embarrassing moment of my life. I won't even mention it here. It's so... Well, I'm going to be mentioning it. That's stupid. Why did I say that? It's about the time I pooped my pants uh, as an adult when I was going out on a Friday night trying to pick up women. So go grab a lemon drop or whatever your drug of choice is. Mine are sour starburst. Uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Today's podcast is sponsored by romance-text.com. Looking to reignite the passion in your relationship? You have to check out romance-text.com. Com. This is how to use text messages to bring back the passion and reignite the spark you once had. Now, if you're thinking this sounds cheesy or maybe it's just learning how to send dirty text messages, it's actually not. This program by relationship expert Michael Fiore has been featured in over 200 television and radio shows. This program has a money-back guarantee. It is normally $97, but listeners of Bloggers Are Weird get a special price of only $47 for the entire program. By purchasing the program, you help support this show. Visit romance-text.com and get the passion back. Everyone poops their pants at age 26. Now, I'm 33 years old and have never had a mosquito bite. I know that may sound hard to believe, but it's true. Or maybe if I've had a mosquito bite in my life, I've not known about it. Never seen one on my body, nor have I ever regularly scratched at something on my skin. Uh, I also don't use moisturizer, not sure if that's related. While I think it's pretty common to get a mosquito bite or two, most people have never pooped their pants as an adult. But I have. Just once, mind you, but once is plenty. <laughs> now, how did I poop my pants? Why did I poop my pants? And most importantly, where did I poop my pants? The setup. Now, I'm not a good drinker. And by that, I mean I'm an absolutely fantastic drinker. I'll drink more than you can and much faster. My body loves alcohol, but it also tends to need alcohol, like on a Thursday at noon. So I'm better off without it. When I was in a previous career, I had a studio apartment in the Lakeview neighborhood of Chicago. I spent most of my days working and my nights alone. Oh, and I made like no money. It was rough. One weekend, I got invited to a bachelor party. And it was a pub crawl in my neighborhood. Now, I don't know The Bachelor at all, or I didn't know The Bachelor. I know him now, but at the time, I didn't. But I did know some of his friends. Uh, I was just excited to have something to do. My dance card was not full. Uh, that day, I went out to do some shopping. And on the way home from the grocery store, I saw a sign at 7-Eleven that said, Closeout Special Jack Daniels. Now, historically, I didn't buy Jack Daniels. It's just too expensive. There's plenty of other whiskey that's pretty good, but a few bucks cheaper. But a deal's a deal. I walked in and asked the clerk. He pointed to a bunch of dusty boxes on the floor. Oh, oh, this wasn't Jack Daniels. Well, not really. These were Jack Daniels Blackjack Cola Country Cocktails. Now, I know what this really means. It's malt liquor. There's no trace of whiskey in these bottles. 
It's the same crap they use to make hard ciders and lemonade, wine coolers, and Mad Dog 2020. But a six-pack was going for $1.99, manager special. So what if the boxes had a visible layer of dust and were not refrigerated? Who am I, Lady Di? No, is it Lady D? Lady... No, it's Lady Di. Uh, no, by the way, I wrote this back when she was alive, so the reference is not in bad taste. Uh, and I thought, you know, well, hey, I like the taste of cola, and I like the taste of Jack Daniels. And I don't mind malt liquor. The math added up. And off I went to my apartment with 12 bottles. I started drinking in the early afternoon. My goal was to have seven or eight of these down before the bachelor party so I would already have a nice start to the evening and could spend less money at the bars. The problem was I couldn't get drunk. Now, these things must have like a low alcohol content. Plus, they tasted like death. Not like Coke, not like whiskey. Like chalk, or how I think chalk would taste. Pretty sure I finished all 12. As I got ready to go out for the evening, I put on my one expensive pair of pants and a nice shirt. I took a cab over to the first bar and went in. Made my way to the bar and ordered a beer. Within two minutes, it hit me. I needed to go to the bathroom. The problem. I scoped out the bar's bathroom and realized it would not do. Not only do I generally not make in public bathrooms, it's one of my core values, but I especially was not going to make in this bathroom. There was a trough for peeing and a toilet, no door separating. In fact, no door at all. No problem, I thought. I had time. My internal alarm informed me that I had a good hour or two before DEFCON 1. I made some mental notes as I surveyed the neighborhood. The subway across the street looked like a good option. After my next beer, I was going to make a move. I went back to my drink and started mingling. Now, three seconds later. My stomach punched me right in the stomach. It was unfamiliar, but understood. I was going to release the Kraken. Like now. Like seriously, right now. Instead of heading for the bathroom, I bolted out of the bar saying goodbye to no one. The problem was the stupid bar across the street had about 100 people loitering outside, taking all the cabs. I needed a cab to get home. I literally pushed two girls out of the way and jumped in. I gave the cab driver my address and told him I was in trouble. I couldn't exactly tell him why, because I was afraid he would kick me out of the cab. And and that would be worse. So I just said I didn't feel good. Ten seconds later, I pooped. All over myself. Right in the cab. And I was sitting down, so I also got the added bonus of that. Not three moments later, all the windows came down in the cab. I immediately smelled like death. He knew I was in trouble. The plead. He started yelling at me, and I begged him not to kick me out. I think I cried. I promised a big tip if he got me home. Thankfully, he did. I threw a 20 at him on a $4 fare, and I ran out of the cab. Good thing I was wearing dark pants. Now, I had to make a split-second but critical decision. If I sprinted through the main lobby of my apartment building, I ran the risk of someone seeing me. Same thing goes for the elevator. These options are out. Thankfully, there was a side door that opened up from the alley into a stairwell. I tore off down the alley and into my building, a man possessed. I made a silent prayer for an empty stairwell during the four flights I was about to climb. Thankfully, the coast was clear. So was my hallway. There is a God. I got to my door, undid the lock, and went in. I was safe. The cleanup. Made it straight into the bathroom and jumped into the tub fully clothed. Now, I know this is going to be rough. I had to remove my pants and clean up. When I had taken off my pants, well, I'll save you the horror of what I saw, but I threw up all over myself. And so I stood in the shower, covered with mess, and in my best clothes and stone cold sober. And I had to laugh. It was funny. And the weird thing was, I felt okay. The poison had left. I cleaned up and went to the couch to watch television. It was 8.30 p.m. So what exactly happened? I'm pretty sure those Jack Daniels bottles were $1.99 for a reason, and that reason had to do with me pooping my pants. I quit drinking soon after that. Figured it was a sign. The only other time this sort of thing happened, I was on my way to meet my wife's parents for the first time at their cabin in Michigan. I found a big bag of Lifesavers in our car, 
and promptly devoured every one within 20 minutes. My wife exclaimed, those are sugar-free, you know. No, I, I did not know. Quick cut to 10 minutes later when I bolted from her Jeep Wrangler into the woods crying. It was our sixth date. There, a bonus poop story. Plus, I'd like to point out that you're a grown adult and you just listened to 10 minutes about pooping. That's pretty immature, even for you. Go get back to work.